mysterious messages written on the sky and signed the eagle are believed to be the work of Nathan Gregory, owner of a small carnival show, whom the directors of an airplane factory charge with attempting to blackmail them. Gregory, in his turn, accuses the directors of having stolen from him an invention that is worth a fortune. Gregory's daughter, Jean, frantic with anxiety because her father has disappeared mysteriously, has trailed two agents of the Eagle to the airplane factory. Meanwhile, her friend Craig McCoy, stunt flyer with the carnival, is also at the factory, accompanied by the strong man, the ventriloquist, and the midget. She's fainted. Get her to the car. I hold these birds up. You well done, you're holding. Gregory, getting in the car. So you thought you'd get away from us, did you? Not a chance. Open that door there. Yeah, you'll never get me back to her alive. Hey, what's this all about, you two? You got here just in time, officer. This man's insane. Insane? Why, you... So he is insane, eh? Yeah. Persecution mania. Thinks he's an inventor whose plans have been stolen. Imagines he's being held prisoner by enemies. You cutter! Oh, I am an inventor. My invention was stolen. And I have been held prisoner by the directors of that corporation. There, see? <sighs> yeah, too bad. One of you boys drive the car and we'll take him down. Oh, that but I tell you, it's all a mass of lies. I am an inventor yeah, and I... sure, sure. But officer... I understand. Come along. Tell me all about it now. Say, officer... Hadn't we better take him back to the sanitarium? You see, his relatives are big shots. And they wouldn't want the newspapers to get hold of this. Oh, I see. I, I haven't been in a sanitarium. I tell you, these men are after my life. Gregory is the eagle, all right. This time, we actually saw him. Yes, there's, there's no doubt of it. Look, another sky message. Eagle again. He's riding aim. His we, victim. We've got to do something to stop this fiend. Well, what can we do? Oh, this thing can't go on. Let's let's call in the police. You know very well we don't dare appeal to the law. Well, Certainly, we absolutely fail it. Why? She's 
suffering from shock uh, more than anything else, I think. A night's rest will take care of that, I'm sure. It's enough to shock anybody being attacked by a madman. Madman? What's happened? Now, Where's now. my father? You mustn't talk. You'll only excite yourself. But I want to know what happened and how I... We'll tell you all about it in the morning. I tell you, I can't stay here. I've got to... There now, you've got to rest. Be a good girl and try and sleep. Well, I've got to get back to my beat. So long. What are those men doing here? Why, they brought you here. got to get out of here. Please get my clothes. Wouldn't do you any good if you had them. The entire staff has orders not to let you out. <laughs> Here's a funny gag. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I say to you, I say, who was that woman that I seen you with on the street last night? <laughs> and you say... And I say... Let's go up there. The idea of starting to learn a new act this time of night. Nothing doing. We gotta stay up till Craig and the rest of the bunch come back from the factory. Ah, uh, gee. Ah, uh -huh. That sounds like them now. Everything worked out perfectly. Where's Mr. Gregory? Why, I haven't seen him. Isn't he with you? Well, that's strange. I thought he was ahead of us. Maybe we better go back and see what's happened to him. No, you two fellas turn in. If he doesn't show up pretty quick, Henry and I will go look for him. Well, I'm sure that Mr. Gregory got out of the factory, but the question now is, is who... No, you don't. Get in here. So Gregory got away from the factory, did he? Where is he now? I don't know. And if I did know, do you think I'd tell you after you robbed him, kidnapped him, and blamed all your crimes onto him? Why, you! The man's crazy. Don't pay any attention to him. I'll hold him here. You fellows go out and search the grounds for Gregory. I wonder if you could get me a glass of hot milk. Sometimes that helps me to sleep. Well, I'll try. Hello? Give me that phone. It may be just the information we want. Oh, let a guy talk to his girl, won't you? Wasn't you ever in love? Why, certainly I've been in. Smart boy. Oh, be a little broad-minded, won't you? What are you talking about? This is Jean. Oh, honey, I can't tell you that. I've got uh, visitors. You mean some of those men are there? Oh, sure, I mean it, sweetheart. I mean that and nothing else but. Gee, ain't love grand, Mr. Green? <sighs> Do you think that's funny? Goodbye, honey. Poor Jeanette. I hate to think of her in the hospital. In the hospital? Why, sure. Rid past sanitarium. She's just like a prisoner there. And dying to see us. Hey, Craig, there's somebody snooping her. What the? Come on in. Join the party. But no loud talk. What's the idea of the stick-up, Craig? They're after Gregory again. Get up on that stool.
Well, if we're gonna be here all night, we might as well rehearse the act. Okay. Now, let's see, uh, what was that gag? I say to you... You say to me, who was that lady I seen you on the street with last night? All right. Who was that lady I seen you with on the street last night? That wasn't no street. That was right up my alley. Papa, wasn't that a great gag, Mr. Green? What will I do? Break him in two and throw the pieces in the wood box? No, tie him up. Duck outside and steer the others away from us. <laughs> I know a better way. Here he is, fellas. I've got him over back of the Ferris wheel. Ward, he's got Gregory. Here, Billy, stand guard over him. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, pal. <laughs> Where's Gregory? I thought you said you had him. Why, no, we thought you said it. No. No? There's a Dr. McCoy in the lobby to see your patient. Dr. McCoy? Yes, he was sent by the two gentlemen who brought the patient in last night. Okay, show him in. They're expecting you. Room three, first to the left. Thank you. Good morning, nurse. Uh, good morning, doctor. And how's our patient this morning? I think rested very nicely. Oh, uh, may I borrow your thermometer, please? Uh, certainly. Oh, that was clumsy of me. Could you get me another thermometer, please? Yes. What's it all about? How did you get here? Oh, I don't know. Daddy and I were attacked in the factory, and then I fainted like a little fool. Then the next thing I knew, I was here. Oh, listen, I think they've got Daddy here, too. What makes you think so? Because it was Moran Boyle who brought me here. Moran Boyle? That means we've got to work fast. Now I'll prowl around and try and find out what room he's in. Warren Boyle are out there now. How are the patients this morning? Both are doing nicely, I believe. Dr. McCoy is in with the young lady now. Hello? McCoy. Yes. Mrs. Bromley is doing as well as can be expected. I suppose it'd be all right for us to go in, wouldn't it? Yes, I think so. You know the room. Yes, thank you. Don't be a fool. It's Greg who we're after. There's no use getting noisy. You're going out with us, and that's that. I, I won't go. You can't make me go. Would you rather we'd calm you down? What's the meaning of this, gentlemen? Who are you, and what do you want with this patient? Why, we're the men that brought him here last night. This gentleman is his brother. Hey, it's a lie. He's not my brother. They've come here to kidnap me. Oh, now, me. now, that's all right. I'm sure everything's going to be all right. You boys better step outside while I quiet him down. Easy, Skipper. Now, the strong man's waiting outside in the car. When I give you the signal, I beat it. Craig, look out! Never mind me. You get out, quick. Come quick! The crazy 
man's getting away. Where's your father? Craig's with him. Look. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. I don't belong in the house. Get a mother's father. Not in the car. I hold these boys up. Come on, we've got to stop Gregory. around the corner. I'm going back to help Craig. Go on through, Gene. If we stop, they'll get us. 